Computer security isn't all about computers and how they work, or about firewalls, or about how you set up your network. Computer security also relies heavily on people, and there's a really important human element to computer security. That leads us to talking about something that's, that are known as social engineering attacks. Social engineering attacks take advantage of the fact that people are involved in maintaining, configuring computers, helping people with computer problems, and social engineering takes the fact that the people are frequently not as rational as computers are. People can be swayed by emotions, people can be swayed by appeals and you know, cries for help or whatever. Um, and we can use that to gain access to systems that we shouldn't have. So probably the most famous um, sort of person who committed a fair number of these types of attacks was someone called Kevin Mitnick. And so he has stories, for example, um, a lot of social engineering attacks have to do with taking advantage of sort of information asymmetry. Um, you know, gaining people's confidence by presenting them with information that seems like it's something that I would only know if I knew the person or I, I was who I said I was, but is actually really easy to find out. So Kevin Mendick has a story about how once he called, he was trying to get access to source code for a particular um, device that he wanted to hack into. So he called one person at a company, he got their voicemail, and the voicemail message said that they were on vacation for several weeks. Okay, well now I know something about that person. So he called the next person and he said, oh hi, by the way, and he was pretending to be somebody else. You know, I tried blah blah blah, but you know, they're gone for several weeks and so they told me to contact you. Well now I've established some um, sort of trust with the person. Because that person may know that the person is on vacation, but they may not know that the person left a voicemail that says that they're on vacation that's available to anybody to find out. And so now I fooled you a little bit because now you, I've, I've given you a little bit of reason to think that you're, um, to think that I'm the person that I'm, you know, purporting to be. There are examples online that you can find of people that have been hacked uh, frequently by people taking advantage of, you know, really uh, people like customer service agents that are trying to be helpful. They want to help you. So you call up and they say, okay, well, do you know the answers to your security questions? And you're like, oh gosh, I set them so long ago. I've really forgotten, you know, can't you help me out? And I might give them some information about you that's easy to find out. I might say like, oh, okay, well, you know, I, I remember I had something to do with the high school that I went to in Rochester Hills or something like that. Um, but I might, but, and, and that might be related to the answer to the security question, but who knows? Uh, but I, it's easy to find out. I could use the internet to find out uh, about you, even if I don't know the answer to your security questions. In other cases, for example, there were, I guess there was one thing I read about where um, someone, there was one company that was using part of the credit card number as a type of identity check. So when you called up, they would say, okay, well, what's the last four digits on the card number that you used last time you made a purchase on our site or whatever. And that was part of how they would verify your identity if you were trying to reset your password or do something like that. Unfortunately, there was another website um, that would give you that information. So I could call up and I would, and they would say, oh, okay, and I would say, you know, I'd like to check, you know, my transactions, and they would say, okay, well, yesterday you made, um, you made a payment with a car, and the last four digits are one, two, three, four. So now I'm combining two pieces of information. So I call that first site, I get the last four digits of the credit card number that they think are safe to give away. I call the second site or the second company, and I provide that information. And now the person has this reason to think I'm who I think I am. And so if you look at computer uh, security, um, there are a lot of cases where the conventional wisdom is sort of humans are the worst link or the weakest link in computer security. Because a computer, a firewall, if you keep, like there's no reasoning with a firewall. You can't go to the firewall and be like, look, I know that you said I wasn't supposed to log into port 8081, but I really need to right now. And I'm at the airport, and I'm about to get on a flight, and I'm, I'm low on cash, so can you really just let me through port 8081 just this one time? I promise it's okay. A computer firewall will just never 
think that's okay. They'll just keep saying no, 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 no. It's not reason. It doesn't have feelings. It doesn't have emotions. It can't empathize with you. Whereas a human on the other end of the line might be okay. Well, let's use this as a reason to discard the fact that you don't know any of your security questions. You only know small amounts of information about the person. Oh no, yeah. Like I'll send a uh, reset password request. And oh, you wanted to go to an alternate email? Oh, that's interesting. Oh, while well, I'm traveling, and this is the email I use while I'm traveling. Blah, blah, blah. So, you know, social engineering is this idea of gaining access to computer systems by exploiting humans. And really about exploiting the things that are good about humans. We trust each other, uh, we empathize with each other, we want to be helpful. But if you're a malicious person and you can gather a little bit of information, you can frequently use that information to get someone to do something to unlock some information about another person that they really should not.